Today we're going to look at a nice problem that's from my favorite calculus book by Spivak. And this is a problem which I'll call the beginning student's dream, or really when does the beginning student's dream hold true? So in particular, we're going to assume that we have real numbers x and y, where y is not equal to zero. And then our goal is to determine what x values will make x plus y to the n equal to x to the n plus y to the n. So before we like prove our result, let's do a little bit of data collection. We'll do data collection by working out some examples, starting with n equals 2. So that means we need x plus y squared to be equal to x squared plus y squared. So multiplying out this left-hand side will give us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. That needs to be equal to x squared plus y squared, but that's achieved if and only if we have 2xy is equal to zero. But two is not equal to zero because we're over the real numbers. We're not over a field of characteristic two. We assumed y is not equal to zero. So that means that we have x is equal to zero. So that's our condition here for the n equals two case. X must be equal to zero. Now let's move on to the n equals three case. So we'll have x cubed plus y cubed equal to x plus y quantity cubed. But you can multiply that out to get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. So just to reiterate, that's x plus y all cubed. But now you can cancel the x cubed and the y cubed from both sides and then factor some stuff out of this middle. You can factor a 3xy out of this middle, leaving you with x plus y equals zero. But now let's notice we've got two solutions here. We have x is equal to zero or x is equal to negative y. So in this case, when we have n equals three, we get two possibilities. Like I said before, x equals zero and x equals negative y. Now let's go to the n equal four case and we'll do x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals x plus y all to the fourth. But we can multiply that out to get x to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed and then plus y to the fourth. So next up, we can cancel the x to the fourth and the y to the fourth from both sides. Then we can factor a 2xy out of these middle terms. That'll leave us with 2xy times the quantity 2x squared plus 3xy plus 2y squared equals zero. So immediately from this 2xy factor, we see that x equals zero is indeed a solution. And then another solution would occur when this quadratic equals zero. Since y is fixed at a non-zero number, we can like maybe solve this for x. And that'll give, give us x equals, so negative three y plus minus the square root of three y squared, that's gonna be nine y squared, minus four times two y squared times two, that'll be 16 y squared all over two times two, which is four. But now let's notice that since y is non-zero, y squared is always positive. So the stuff under this radical is always negative. But the stuff under the radical always being negative means there's no real solution to this quadratic polynomial being equal to zero. So in other words, we can say that this never gives us a solution. And thus, this x equals zero case is the only solution in the n equals four case. So let's Let's gather that right here. Okay, now let's move on to the n equals five case. That'll be the last like example that we work out. So we'll have x to the fifth plus y to the fifth equals x plus y to the fifth multiplied out. So that'll be x to the fifth plus five x to the fourth y plus 
10 x cubed y squared plus 10 x squared y cubed plus 5 x y to the fourth plus y to the fifth. And you might wonder how I can multiply those things out so quickly. Just to reiterate, this term right here on the left is x plus y to the fifth, but there's a kind of a standard trick for multiplying those out using binomial coefficients. Okay, but notice we can cancel the x to the fifth and the y to the fifth, and then we can maybe factor some stuff out again. We can, in this case, factor a 5xy out of the remaining terms. That'll leave us with x cubed plus 2x squared y plus 2xy squared plus y cubed. So something like that. Then I can take this x cubed and this y cubed and factor an x plus y out of that. So that's going to give us something like this. We have 5xy and then we'll have x plus y. And then what will be left will be x squared minus xy plus y squared. So that's the factorization of that x cubed plus y cubed. And then I can factor a 2xy out of the remaining stuff and we'll see that we're left with x plus y. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now we can factor an x plus y out of this whole thing. That'll leave us with 5xy times x plus y. And then we'll be left with x squared minus xy plus y squared plus 2xy. In other words, x squared plus xy plus y squared. So we have all of this is equal to zero. I should have like kept this equal to zero the whole way. That means that x is equal to zero. That's one solution. We get that from the multiplier of x out front. x is equal to negative y. We get that from the x plus y out front. Or this quadratic polynomial is zero, but that's in fact never equal to zero by a result similar to what we saw right here. So that gives us our only solutions in this case. And now a guess at the general rule is shaping up, I think. Notice for even values of n, it looks like we have x is equal to 0, whereas for odd values of n, it looks like x is 0 or x is negative y. And so let's prove that. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, just wanted to take a minute to plug the Patreon. Patreon is a great way for viewers like you to get more involved in the community and earn awesome rewards, like live access to the Patreon seminar series, exclusive Discord perks, and early access to some videos. I'm really psyched about the power of this community to enact change for the betterment of math education, and we're well on our way to achieving our $1,000 per month goal. Thanks for all your support, and now back to the video. Okay, so we'll prove the even case first. In particular, if n is equal to 2n, M, and y is non-zero, we'll look at the case when y is bigger than zero, but the case when y is less than zero can be at, uh, handled similarly. Then x plus y to the n equals x to the n plus y to the n if and only if x is equal to zero. This reverse direction is super clear, so we'll only focus on the forward direction. And we'll do that with a bit of calculus. So let's consider the following function. I'll call it f of x, and it'll be x to the 2m plus y to the 2m minus x plus y to the 2m. Again, given that fact that we're using n as an even number, this 2m right here. Okay, so now let's note that we have f evaluated at zero is equal to zero. So that's pretty clear just by the fact that everything would cancel out there. But what we'd like to show is that this is the only zero. So to show that f of x is not equal to zero for all x not equal to zero. And we'll do that by proving that f is an always decreasing function. So if it's always decreasing and it's equal to zero at zero, that means it's never zero otherwise. Okay, so we'll do this by taking the derivative. So notice the derivative is equal to 2m times x to the 2m minus 1. But then y is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. And then here we get minus 2m plus, or times x plus y to the 2m minus 1. So something like that. 
And now we can factor a 2m out of this and we're left with x to the 2m minus one minus x plus y to the 2m minus one. But now since we're looking at the case right now when y is positive, then this difference is always negative because we're subtracting something which is larger than what we're starting with. So this is always negative. So we've got a function that's always decreasing. So f is always decreasing. Then it's equal to zero, zero. So that means that's the only place it can be zero. So the picture looks something like this probably like that. And you might say, well, this looks like a polynomial of odd degree, whereas up here by the definition of f, it looks like we started with a polynomial of even degree. But in fact, the even degree, po but in fact, the highest even term cancels when we multiply this out and cancel the x to the 2m. So in fact, this is a polynomial of degree 2m minus 1. Okay, so let's look at the odd case. Now let's prove the odd case, and we'll use a similar strategy. Although I thought about working out a strategy that, this, that just involved the combinatorics of binomial coefficients, but it turned out it wasn't really worth it. I think this is maybe the best strategy. Okay, so let's get to it. So we've got n is equal to 2m plus 1, so it's odd. And then here we'll look at the special case when y is less than 0, but the case when y is bigger than 0 is similar. Then x plus y to the n is x to the n plus y to the n if and only if x is 0 or x is negative y. Okay, so let's get to it. So we'll first define the same sort of function. So this is going to be x to the 2m plus 1 plus y to the 2m plus 1 minus x plus y to the 2m plus 1. And then, just like we had before, this looks like an odd degree polynomial, but it's in fact an even degree polynomial. So this is like the opposite of what we had before. And in fact, this polynomial is degree 2m. And that's because the x to the 2m plus 1 term will cancel. Now let's uh, maybe first note that f evaluated at 0 is the same thing as f evaluated at negative x, which is 0. And that's pretty clear just by the fact that we have odd exponents here. But now what we'll show is that these are the only zeros and we'll do it using a similar strategy. So let's take the derivative. So that's gonna give us 2m plus one. I'll go ahead and factor the 2m plus one out. And then we'll have x to the 2m minus x plus y to the 2m. Now we'd like to know when this is equal to zero. So when it's equal to zero is the only place where the function can change from being increasing to decreasing. So that means we have x to the 2m equals x plus y to the 2m, but that means that x is equal to plus minus x plus y, or maybe x plus y equals plus minus x. And we get both of those solutions because we have an even exponent here. But let's notice that the plus x doesn't make any sense here. That does not yield a solution. And that's because that would imply y is zero when it is not. So the only thing that yields a solution is the minus sign, which tells us that in fact, we get x equals negative y over two. So just to reiterate, that's a critical point, something we would call a critical point, And that's the only place this function can change from being increasing to decreasing. And from here, we'll make a little chart of the sign of the first derivative. So let's do that. We have f prime. We'll put our critical point here, minus y over 2. And then we'll pick two test points on either side. So notice y is less than 0. That means negative y is bigger than 0. So that means 0 would be over here. And then as my other test point, I'll use negative y. And now we'll check the sign of f prime at zero and negative y. So plugging zero in, you'll see that we'll get a negative number. That's because we have zero minus something to an even power. So that's gonna be zero minus something positive. 
Then if we put negative y in, we'll see that this bit cancels and we get something that is positive. So that means here our function is decreasing, here our function is increasing. Then that's the only place that it's changing from being increasing to decreasing. So that means we can sketch a picture of our graph. So the point zero is going to be important, the point negative y over two will be important, and also the point minus y will be important. So it'll be decreasing at zero, but it's equal to zero at zero. It's increasing at negative y, but it's equal to zero at negative y. And then its slope of the tangent line is zero at negative y over two. So that means the picture of our graph looks something like this. But this is really just a graphical representation of what these calculations have shown, which is this point right here, x equals zero, and this point right here, x equals negative y, are the only zeros to this polynomial equation, and thus the only place this equation holds. Now, if you're interested, a while ago I made another video on this same topic, but instead of looking over the real numbers, we looked at over other types of fields, like maybe the integers modulo p, or so on and so forth. So that should be on the screen right now, and that's a good place to stop.